Hey all, Lawrence from Express Unity, and today we are going to be uh, looking into how we can edit post-processing effects uh, inside our code. So usually uh, what you would do to install the uh, new post-processing processing effects is go into the package manager and install it through here. However, doing this um, I think there's a bit of an error with it at the moment, but it doesn't allow you to actually code for it as uh, Unity ends up missing the using that you actually need uh, in order to code for it. So what we actually need to do is go to the GitHub link. Um, it's basically the same version as what's on the package manager, I believe. Um, so yeah, just go to the GitHub link and just download it. I've already downloaded it, so it's going to say I already have it, but all is good. There it is. Alrighty, so you will end up getting this folder, and I think all we need is this post-processing folder here. So let's just right click, show an explorer, and drag the post-processing folder inside of our assets folder. Alrighty, cool. Just let that import. Let's go. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff for it to import. So just give it a second here. Alrighty. So just to see that it's working, let's create some effects for our camera. Um, I'm just going to create a cube just to give some kind of depth to the scene. And I'll raise the camera a little and maybe rotate it. move it like this so we can see the cube a bit clearly um okay so this new game object i'm just going to call it uh whoops, i'm just going to call it post processing i'm also going to change the layer to pro, uh, post processing and we want to add a post processing layer is that it no sorry wrong one uh, remove this we want a post-processing volume, and we also want to create a new, uh, where is it? Um, a new pro post-processing profile. I'm just going to call it PPP, and we'll drag that in there. For some reason, this didn't hit my name change. All right, so we want to set this is global, and for our main camera, we want to add the post-processing layer and we want to set the layer to post-processing. And of course we can change the anti-aliasing, we'll just do it to pass. And just to see if it works, let's go ahead and add some bloom. And we'll change the intensity, there it is, so it is working. And maybe another one that we can affect, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's, I mean, that's not really gonna, doesn't really show us too much. I want to add an effect that we can really, uh, we can really see the change in code. Um, yeah, maybe this one would, would be good. Okay. So, we've, we've set up some basic post-processing. However, uh, at the moment, we can only change that inside the editor. So, let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm just going to call it scripts. And I'm going to create a new script. And I'm just going to say uh, post-processing uh, effects. And for now, I'm just going to drag this onto our camera. Actually, let's drag it onto our post-processing game object. 
Alrighty, let's open this up. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is using Unity Engine dot, uh, dot renderer or rendering rather dot post processing. Now what we want to do is create a new public post processing. Uh, no, sorry, post process uh, volume, and I'm just going to call this volume. So if we save that and let it compile, this should now have a field and let's just drag a post processing volume there or post process volume. Um, now let's add something for us to edit. So let's go ahead and create a private bloom and I'm just going to call it underscore bloom. And then we want to say volume dot try. Uh, sorry dot profile dot try get settings and we want to out the underscore bloom so basically what uh, this is going to do is if the current bloom setting is enabled it's basically going to push what the value is into our private bloom so we can test this out by immediately saying after that let's do bloom dot uh, intensity dot value um, make sure you do dot value. Otherwise, if you set uh, the intensity, it's going to want, I think they call it a float parameter and it just adds an extra line of code and it's not really worth. It. So just do dot value and let's just set the bloom to zero. Equal. So at the moment, you can see we have a bit of bloom. If we play the scene, all that bloom should go. There it is. So the bloom has indeed uh, been removed. And that is because we have set the intensity value to a different value here. So what we can do is now inside the update, let's go and let's maybe lerp the intensity value. So underscore bloom dot intensity dot value equals math f dot um, lerp. And let's lerp from zero to say 15. Uh, the speed being 0.5 times time dot delta time. So over time, you will start to see the bloom get stronger and stronger until it reaches that value of 15. Uh, uh, what have I done wrong here? Any value... Okay. Oh, sorry. So we want to set the bloom intensity value to the start of the lerp. And that should fix our problem. And there it is. So over time, our intensity gets stronger. Awesome. Uh, so let's do the same with the next setting that we have. Now we do the same volume.profile and we want to try get the setting out. And now let's just set the, uh, what's the default value? So the intensity. So we'll just set the intensity. Uh, dot intensity dot value equal to zero. And we're basically going to do the same. Like so. Let's 
play this. And that was really fast. <laughs> so let's uh, slow this one down a bit. And there you go, both the bloom, and we slowly have this circle coming in. So all of this is done via our code now. Pretty simple to implement, um, and is very powerful if, say, you have, um, I don't know, say in our FPS game, for example, when we get shot, we could manipulate this value here to kind of come in closer and closer, depending to how much health we have left. We could also... Uh, we could also make it the color red or something like that um, and make it pulse inside the script So there is a lot of things we can do with this. So that's pretty cool Hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial a little bit of a simple one But like I said in my last video, I can't really focus on the multiplayer one too much just because I have limited time now um, but as soon as I am free, I do plan to continue that multiplayer tutorial. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys will stick around. And hopefully you guys still do enjoy these more little uh, videos that I put out. Um, but, yeah, please do subscribe. It helps me out a heap. And if you guys need any extra assistance, I'm always in a Discord server. Uh, link uh, to the invite will be in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.